Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. In Photomechanic, we have two IPTC metadata editors. In this video, we'll look at the two editors and what we can do with each one. Here's the first metadata editor. This one is called Metadata IPTC Info. It's pretty simple. It reads existing metadata on an image, allows you to edit it, make it whatever you want it to be, and then when you click OK, it writes it back to the image. We could refer to this one as the regular or basic metadata editor. Frankly, it's the only one that I used for the first several years that I used Photo Mechanic. It took me quite a while before I even really discovered that there was another metadata editor. You'll notice that I called it by clicking the I button on this photo. I could have used the I key on my keyboard just as well. Here's the other metadata editor. This one is called IPTC Template, or excuse me, Metadata IPTC Template. It used to be called, before Photo Mechanic 6, the Stationary Pad. Now, Stationary Pad was kind of a strange name. What the heck does that mean? Some users complained about it. Well, okay. You know, it was a point well taken, really. So, Photo Mechanic renamed it. They now call it the template editor, and that's what I'll call it for the purposes of this video. I don't think the template editor is such a great name either, because it's sort of descriptive, but not really. Yes, you can edit templates in this metadata editor. You can edit templates just totally fine in the other one as well. But the reality is you can do a lot of stuff with this one that you can't do with the other one. And some things the other way around. As far as the name goes, who cares? We could call these things Ben and Jerry if we want. It's what they do, it's not what they're called. So let's go back to the basic metadata editor. This is the metadata editor, and I'll call it this time with the I key, just for the sake of variety, that we would use if we're captioning one picture or some pictures from scratch. It works just pretty much the way you would expect it to work, which is in fact the way Photoshop or a text editor or Pretty much any other sort of editor works. You open a file, you do something to the file, you save the file, and there you go. So if we were captioning this picture of this flower, we would start by applying a template to it. And this is an actual picture that I actually took, which doesn't make it a great picture, it just makes it a picture. But we'll apply my regular real template to this picture. And we would write a caption for this picture. And I'll paste it so that you don't have to watch me type. If we wanted to, we could add some keywords to this picture. That might be a good idea. And depending on our workflow, we might have to do a headline or an object name or some other metadata stuff. When we're done, we could just hit OK and start over again with the next picture. Or if we wanted to, we could use a button and save what we've done on this picture and move ahead to the next picture. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back to our original rose picture here. We'll copy the metadata. We'll save and move ahead to the next picture. That's this one. You can see here in this tiny little thumbnail. We'll just paste in our metadata. And since these two pictures are siblings of each other, or actually parent-child, this one is the camera raw file, and this one is an edited JPEG made from it. So they can have exactly the same caption, but if we wanted to change the caption, we could do it easily enough, just write over the old with the new, and then save, and then move on. Okay, great. But what we've done here is we've actually surfaced one of the limitations of this particular editor. That method that, that I just demonstrated, caption a picture, copy the metadata onto the next picture, re-edit the caption, maybe re-edit a couple of other fields, and then move on, is a tried and true workflow. But it's got some limitations. And in this particular case, we have one. If we look right down here, and we're now on the camera raw version of this particular picture, the RAF file, we look at the transref field, job ID, transref, whatever you want to call it. And here we have in that field the file name of the first picture that we looked at, the file name that has underscore selects appended to it and it's a JPEG picture. Well, the picture that we're looking at right now has a different file name. 
it has this file name, which is the same camera imposed string of letters and numbers. And it's a RAF file, so it has .raf at the end. Certainly not the same thing. What happened? Well, when I ingest my pictures into Photo Mechanic, at the very beginning, straight off the camera card, I use a variable to have Photo Mechanic print the original camera file name in the transref field. I found that to be really pretty handy. I mean, if you take this picture over here, for an example, we'll move this out of the way. Here we have sample JPEG. It has no caption. It has no keywords. That's all it has is a file name. And if all I had was that file name, I would have a heck of a time finding my way back to the raw original. So I did this clever little piece of workflow that puts the file name in the transref field. We talked about that in a different video. But if I simply copy and paste metadata from one picture to another, I'm going to pick up all the metadata from the original picture, with the exception of the timestamp. Photo Mechanic parses the timestamp from the EXIF data or from the file header data for every picture individually. You can't copy and paste that. But everything else, all the IPTC fields, including this one, it copies and pastes. And just like Photoshop or Microsoft Word or any other sort of editor that works this way, whatever is in the file when you save is what you're going to have. So I just copied and pasted this transref from one file to another. Well, that's one thing that can go wrong when you use this editor. What if we just wanted to work with a whole bunch of photos all at once in a batch? So as it turns out, the other metadata editor, the metadata template editor, can fix this for us. The metadata template editor is meant to work with multiple images at once. Unlike its sibling, it can't read existing metadata, at least not directly anyway. There is a way, this is photo mechanic after all, and we'll come back to it. And it can work around metadata that already exists in target images. So let's take this thing for a spin. We'll go ahead and load a template into it. We'll use the Joe Photographer sample template that we've used in so many videos. Notice that working with templates in this editor is exactly the same as working with templates in the other editor. Go to the snapshot button, choose a template, click on it, you're good to go. If you have information in the editor, you can save that information into a template right here in the snapshot dialog, or you can use the save and load buttons to export your template as an XMP file to share it or back it up. And you can back up snapshot files, dot snap files. The same way, just go to manage snapshots in the snapshot dialog. And your file manager, your operating system file manager will open to the correct folder for the snapshot settings for that particular dialog. And you can copy them, you can back them up, you can delete them, you can share them with other copies of Photo Mechanic, whatever you want to do. All of that works exactly the same in both editors. Also, all this information in the pull-down lists for both editors is the same information. It's shared. The templates are shared. This information is shared. So, yes, this is called the template editor, but both of them really edit templates just fine. So let's close this for a minute. And by the way, once you've loaded this, it's sticky. You can open and close it to your heart's content. The same information will stay on it. And let's select these pictures that have something to do with records or musical instruments or whatever. And I'll go ahead and reopen the template editor. I did that with Command-I. I also could do that by going up here to the main menu. And I could do Metadata IPTC template from there. We open the editor. And we'll click here to apply Joe's template to all of these pictures. There's yet another way that we can do this. We can also right click on the picture and we can apply metadata template. Whatever template is currently loaded in the template editor will be applied. So now, assuming we don't have any problems with clever guys like me putting unique information in the pictures before we even start to work on them, we can go back to our regular IPTC metadata editor which we can call with the I key, or we can call it with the I button on the thumbnail in the contact sheet. And by the way, you can call this editor with the I key, even if you're in the preview window in Photo Mechanic. Anyhow, 
Now that we're here, we can add a caption. And once again, I won't make you watch me type. And then we can move on to the next picture. And we can repeat the process. But wait a minute, let's go back and let's look at this caption that we just added here. Like many captions, there is a second sentence in this caption that adds context, as well as the photographer's inline byline. It'd be kind of cool if we could take this second sentence that's in this caption and go ahead and add it to the rest of the musical instrument pictures in one go. Well, let's see if we can do that. I'll go ahead and copy it to the clipboard. And we can dismiss this. And let's see here. Let's select the pictures that we want to apply it to. There's that one. That's a musical instrument. And we'll say this microphone here is a musical instrument as well. We'll bring our template editor back. I'll go ahead and clear the template editor. And you may have noticed when I did that, that we have all these tick boxes next to every field in the template editor. And I'll put Joe's starter template back in here. And the tick box is ticked next to every field that has information in it. If I untick the tick box, the tick box essentially turns that field off and on. If I untick a tick box, that field will be turned off. This is probably the biggest difference between the two editors. In the template editor, I can turn fields on and off. And if I turn a field off, that field won't do anything, regardless of what might be in the target image. So I just clicked off the city and state here. If the target image has something in the city or state fields, my turning these fields off in the template editor means the template editor will skip over those fields. In other words, I can work around existing metadata by just turning the fields off and it won't overwrite it. If I go back to the normal metadata editor, it doesn't work that way. The normal metadata editor mows down everything in its path. If, for instance, in this particular case, the keywords field is blank, if I save a template that looks like this, that has no keywords, over a picture, it will blank out the keywords field. It'll delete everything in the keywords field and essentially write an empty keywords field. A lot of times, that's useful behavior. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to write in your new metadata, and if there's old metadata in the way, you really just want to get rid of it. But look at what happens here. I'll go ahead and clear this again. And as you can see, I've taken all of the data out of all of these fields, and Photo Mechanic has turned the fields off. And we look at our caption field. Let's turn the caption field back on. And let's paste this information that we want to paste into these two new photos right here. And then next to our tick box in the caption field, we have a little pull down. With this pull down, we have three choices. We can replace whatever might be already existing in the caption field with what we've put in here, or we can prefix or append. In other words, we can save whatever is existing already in the caption, and we can add what we have here in front of it or behind it. So we have some interesting possibilities. So let's go ahead, since there's nothing in this field in the two pictures that we're talking about that have musical instruments in them, we'll go ahead and we'll apply this caption right there. And as you can see, if we go back to the regular editor, the one that can read existing metadata, there we go. We now have what we just wrote in the caption field. For the sake of illustration, let's say that we have noticed right now, and, and we did really, that Joe Photographer didn't really complete his byline. He didn't add the credit to the byline. So let's put a slash and we'll say that Joe is working for Widgetco LLC. All right. Let's clean everything else out of here. And we'll just add the slash and widget co LLC. We'll look, make sure that all of our other fields are turned off. We'll set this to append. And those pictures are still selected. So we'll just go ahead and apply to selected. I don't even really need to open this because you can see it on the thumbnail. We've now appended Widget Co., the credit, to Joe Photographer, 
to make a proper credit line for Joe. And of course, now if we want to, we can go back in the regular metadata IPTC info editor and we can add proper individual captions to each one of these pictures. Okay, so we'll just okay that. So, okay, remember how I painted myself in the corner with that clever hack about adding the original file name to every picture so that I could find my way back to the original picture no matter if I changed the file name? Remember that? Well, let's see if we can use our template editor to caption these pictures and get around that and maybe even make the caption process a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and select the two pictures and we'll open our template editor. And we'll notice that our template editor has whatever we had in it the last time. It's sticky. That's very useful, but it's not what we want now. So we'll just go ahead and clear that. And we'll notice something else as we've done that. The caption is now set to append. So let's just set that back to the default, which is replace. And we'll go ahead and load the template editor with my standard template. Okay, so that's good. And this is a picture of a red hibiscus of some sort. And a red hibiscus is a hibiscus rosa sinensis. Do I know that? No, I absolutely don't. I just copied and pasted it from Wikipedia. Let us look over here at the transref field, and we can see right there the file name variable in the transref field. That's the way my template is set up. And if I apply this template using the other IPTC editor, this field will be switched on. All the fields are on all the time in the other editor. And the template will apply the variable and Photo Mechanic will substitute the variable with the file name. That's not what I want to do here. And in fact, this template as called in this editor has the job ID transref field turned off. Photo Mechanic is clever enough to allow you to turn fields on and off in a template. And if you're using the template editor where that feature is available, it turns the fields on and off for you as you have selected. If you're using the other editor where every field is on all the time, well, it just is. So we'll double check here. Trust, but verify. And sure enough, we have the transref field turned off. So when I apply this, nothing will be applied in the transref field. So I'll go ahead and apply it and we'll see what happened. And we'll go back to the first one here. And this is the underscore camera file name underscore selects dot JPEG version, the edited JPEG. And this file name with selects added to it is just how I have the exporter in my non-destructive raw editor. And I use on one raw for this sort of thing. That's just how I have the uh, exporter programmed. If we slide down here just a little ways and we look at our transref field, here is the correct file name in this picture. We skipped over that. We originally wrote that file name when we imported or ingested the picture into Photo Mechanic at the beginning. And there it is. It's still there. So we'll pop over to the other picture in the pair and we'll look at its transref. And here is its correct original file name. So there we go. We've used the template editor to caption photos, working around metadata that was already existing in a field in those photos. If I was in this situation, working with real pictures, I could have worked my way through the pictures, captioning as I went along, using the template editor. So let's go back and we'll open up the template editor one last time before we leave it and go back to some fancy features in the other editor. And let's look at a couple of features that I didn't mention before that you should probably know about. Take a look here at the Description Writers field and the Keywords field. And we'll look at our little tick boxes beside these fields. And we can see that we have a second tick box that's beside a plus sign. What the second tick box here does is it turns on append mode. So if I wrote a keyword here, I could append it to existing keywords using this feature. That's really handy. There's a lot of times when you keyword pictures in a take, and then so you'll see some pictures where you want to add another keyword. The keywords already existing on these pictures might not all be the same, so you don't want to take a whole batch of keywords and write them all over the existing ones. 
So here we go. We can use append with the, by turning on this little tick box here, and we can add keywords to existing keywords. You'll notice that these two fields are the only ones that have this feature. The caption field has the feature too, but it's fancier in the caption field. We can prefix as well as append. Keywords are perfectly logical, very useful. We can use them just the way I said. Why the heck is this tick box also available on Description Writer? It doesn't matter to 99% of us. This is a feature that is aimed directly at wire service editors. Wire service is being a core market for photo mechanic. And when a wire service editor works on a photo, works on the caption, they might translate it, they might make an addition or a correction or something like that. The original caption writer is still the original caption writer. And that's the person who would be responsible, presumably, for identification of people, that sort of thing. And the editor, indeed, did work on the picture. Both of them have to be accountable. And so this is kind of like a chain of evidence or a checkout sheet on a clipboard. Everybody adds their initials as they touch the caption and they go along. So there it is. That's why that feature is there. And as I said, most of us really just don't care. We'll go ahead and dismiss that editor. Remember how I said you could call the regular metadata editor from either the contact sheet, thumbnails, in Photo Mechanic, or from the preview. So here, are, here we go. I just used the I key. I called the metadata editor from this preview image. If, on the other hand, I want to call the template editor and I hit Command I, nothing happens. Well, that's kind of a drag because we just saw a moment ago how we can use the template editor to caption pictures, and it would be really nice to have a halfway decent preview when we did that. Now, I suppose I could move the preview out of the way, and I could call the template editor from there. That might work, but that's really pretty awkward. There's a workaround that's probably available to most of us, if not all of us, if we have multiple monitors. And that's simply to put the preview and the contact sheet on two different monitors. And in that case, if you have a picture up in the preview window, you can call the template editor by simply calling it from the contact sheet in the other monitor. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because my video capture software only records one monitor at a time. So now let's go back to the are we calling it the regular IPTC editor? Yeah, so let's go back to that editor and we'll look at some advanced functionality that we can use in that editor. That's actually pretty cool. So we'll open it up here. Remember I said that the template editor couldn't read existing metadata? Well, it can't on its own, but we can do it from here. We can send this metadata from this editor to that one. Now, something that I like very much about Photo Mechanic is that you do not have to know secret handshake mysterious keyboard commands to do your job and to be productive. There's lots of keyboard commands in Photo Mechanic, and they're really good. They make you more productive, they're efficient, all that good stuff. But virtually every single one of them exists either in the main menu pulldowns or in buttons or something. This dialogue, actually both of these dialogues, is about the only place in Photo Mechanic where there are keystrokes that aren't obvious that you can use to do cool stuff. If I hold down the Option key on this Macintosh, it would be the Alt key on a PC, you'll notice that several of my buttons change. And this button, which would normally actually apply whatever is in my template editor to this image, changes to Copy to Template. Well, okay. We'll just press the button, cancel that editor, and we'll reopen the template editor, and holy smokes, all of the metadata from that particular photo has now been loaded into our template editor. And as you can see, the metadata in this picture is pretty extensive. And this picture was actually made for a wire service. So this metadata was done pretty carefully. And if I want to move on to another picture in this same shoot, I really don't want to type all this stuff over again. And I don't want to copy and paste it field by field. So I can take the metadata from my first picture. I can load it in here. And now I can do anything with it that I can do in the template editor. And you'll notice one thing that I do have to do is since it copied the actual file name in this transref field, I have to make sure that's turned off before I move on. But that is a great feature 
in the regular IPTC info editor that allows us to use it to read metadata with the template editor. Close the template editor, and we'll go back to the regular metadata editor once again. Take a look at these navigation buttons in the right rail. We've already used the Save and Advance button, and we've used the straight forward and backwards navigation buttons. We use the Copy button and the Paste button. Those are pretty self-evident. Here we have Save, Upload, and Move Along. What in the world does that do? And I'll tell you frankly, I used Photo Mechanic for a long time, and I didn't discover this button until just recently. And I'm sort of kicking myself, because this is a really cool button. What this does is this allows you, as you're working on your captions, to go ahead and upload your pictures. You press this button, and boom, the picture goes to the active page in the uploader and is sent to wherever is targeted in that active uploader. And Photo Mechanic has uploaders for about a dozen and a half different protocols and services. They've got three flavors of FTP if you're working for a client that FTPs. They have most of the big file sharing services like Box and Dropbox and Amazon F3. They have a bunch of photo sharing or portfolio website services like Photo Shelter and Flickr and SmugMug and Zenfolio. There are a bunch of options for turning in your picture, but you have to set the uploader. You have to set the target in the uploader. So if we go back to our Alt or Option key, press it, this button turns into an Options button, and it opens the uploader. And I can go ahead and choose my target, and then I can just close my uploader. And now I can use this button to instantly upload pictures as I go, as I work through them captioning. We have a Start and Stop button. For voice notes, there's not very many cameras that use voice notes now, only really top of the line cameras. But if you have one that does, you can use voice notes in this particular dialog. You can set ratings and color labels from here. And this is pretty cool. You have this thumbnail in the corner that you can use to help you with IDs or whatnot, but it's really kind of too small. You really have a hard time telling who's who. If you simply click and hold on it, the preview expands into this one, which is a pretty good size preview. It's big enough to let you see who's who and write a proper caption in your picture. And by the way, I'm recording this as in Florida, we're about to enter what I guess would be our second coronavirus lockdown. And I didn't mention it, but the protest that's going on in this picture, these are bartenders and they were protesting to try to make the county reopen the bars from the original lockdown. They did this on the first day that coronavirus cases truly exploded after the what we now understand to be premature reopening that we tried to do down here. So these people's sense of timing is just absolutely not that good. But there we have it. This is how we can use the two different photo editors in Photo Mechanic. As always, if you have questions, if you have comments, whatever, reach out in the comments or on social media or on the contact form on my blog. Until next time, mind your metadata. And for goodness sakes, folks, be safe out there.